I'm Andrew. Today I'd like to teach you how to write an equation for a rational function given the following characteristics of vertical asymptotes at x is equal to negative 4 and x is equal to negative 5, horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 7, and the x-intercepts at 4 and negative 6. So first thing is, what in the world is a rational function? So it's a function that basically has a polynomial all right, in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator. You know, so it has like x squared plus, you know, 5 and, uh, I don't know, x plus 2. That would be a polynomial function. All right, some polynomial, I mean, excuse me, that would be a rational function. It's a composition basically of two polynomial functions, both in the numerator and the denominator. All right, so the idea here is, first, let's focus on the vertical asymptotes. These are the values, anytime you have a vertical asymptote, these are the x values that cause the function to do something wacky. In other words, it causes the function to be undefined. Now the only thing that's going to produce an undefined value here for the rational functions is if the denominator is zero, right? If you were to have a fraction and you plug in zero in the denominator, what happens? That's right. If you were to do that, the calculator is going to yell at you. You can't do it. You cannot divide by a zero, all right? It comes up error. So that's the first idea. Whoops. That's the first idea here, all right? That we have to now, uh, in order to incorporate these vertical asymptotes into the formula, these x values are going to produce a zero result in the denominator. So how do we account for that? Well, what I know is that when x is negative 4, somehow I have to make an expression here that's going to become zero. So if x is negative 4, what do I need to add to that to make it become zero? Right, a positive 4. And if x is a negative 5, what do I have to add to that to make it become a zero? Again, a positive 5 as well, right? This is almost like these are the roots, so to speak, and then these are the factors, right? When you're thinking about like poly and uh, quadratic equations. So you can basically just take those signs and flip them here, all right, to find those factors. And that's it. It's that simple, all right? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to focus actually on the x-intercepts. Leave the horizontal asymptote for the end. We're going to focus on the x-intercepts uh, next. The x-intercepts, remember, are the values of x where the function's value is zero, now, what makes this rational function become zero? That's right, only if you plug in a zero in the numerator. So it's the same exact logic as I approached the vertical asymptotes, except I'm now going to deal in the numerator. Okay? So now, the x-intercepts, again, the x value is 4, so somehow when x is 4, it has to cause this numerator to become zero. So what plus 4 is going to give you zero? That's right, a negative 4. In other words, x minus 4 you can write in here. Yeah, because if you plug in the 4, that 4 minus 4 is 0. And the same thing over here, negative 6, so you're just going to do x plus 6. See, it's basically the same thing as the vertical asymptote, just in the numerator. So that's it. All right, that's that. And now, last but not least, the horizontal, horizontal asymptote. This is actually quite, uh, this is quite easy. All right. So whenever you have a horizontal asymptote, let's not overcomplicate this thing. Okay. What that basically means is that the anytime you have a horizontal asymptote, you're either going to have a top uh, equally heavy function or, or a bottom heavy function, and it's going to simply represent the ratios of the highest powers of x in the numerator and the denominator. Okay, to shortcut this, I'm just going to simply put in a little c here. Okay, and that will actually represent the horizontal asymptote, the value. You can literally just take that and plug it on in. Okay, to make it now seven. And that's basically your answer. Okay, that's it. That's the function. Now, to understand the horizontal asymptote a little more, what you could have done was factor, or not factor, excuse me, FOIL those on the top of the bottom, right? So they would have been then f of x is going to be equal to, you're going to have x squared overall 4, negative 4 plus a 6 is going to be a positive 2. Just shove an x on there and then multiply those two. That's a negative 24. And then in the denominator, you're going to have x squared plus 9x plus 20. Okay, that should be hopefully good uh, at this point. So what's the highest power of x in the numerator and the denominator? They're both twos, right? It's second degree. So anytime you have an equally heavy function that's called, you're going to have a horizontal asymptote. And the way you find that from the other videos I hope you uh, took a look at, you're just going to simply take the, the ratio of the coefficients. So somehow you need a, a first factor here uh, of your x squared to be 7, right? It has to be 7 over 1. So that's basically what's happening. I'm going to take this whole top piece and multiply it by the 7. Okay, and that's how 
not I it, that that's seven times, not seven x. I don't want that to be misconstrued, so I'm just going to put in a seven. Okay, and that's basically the function. That's all there is to it. Now, if you wanted to check, right, we can always go to our quackulator, and we can now plug in our stuff. So just now, seven times, open the parentheses, x squared plus two x uh, minus twenty four. Okay, then divide it by now, parentheses, x squared plus 9x uh, plus 20. And then graph that bad boy. All right, and there it is. Okay. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do a better window. Let's go x min of negative 10 and then just 10 here. We'll zoom in a little bit, okay? So that's kind of what it looks like. Actually, that looks probably worse, but hey, what are you going to do? But you might be able to tell now we're going to have a horizontal asymptote here eventually at 7, okay? If you notice, this curve over here is going to keep on going out and out and out forever, but it's never going to go past this y is equal to 7 line, okay? That's the horizontal asymptote. Notice you have two x-intercepts. You have an x-intercept here at negative 6. <gasps> Look at that. And then 4. Look at that. Okay? And then you also have your vertical asymptotes at negative 4. So that's the x value. Here's that vertical asymptote. And you can kind of tell it's never going to, this is going to approach but never touch. And also then at uh, negative 5. Oh, so actually, this one, so the blue one on the right-hand side, sorry. So the blue one on the right-hand side is going to come down, 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 down forever. It's never going to touch that. And then the blue one on the left side is going to come down, 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 never touch that one. All right? And that's basically it. Thank you for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Check out our channel. We have thousands of videos out there. Not only math, but chemistry, phys physics as well. If I could speak, that'd be nice. I think I say that on every video. Maybe I'm just talking too fast. I gotta slow down. Slow down. Slow. Now I put you to sleep. Good night.